Tonight's program, Conversations of Art and Science with Roman DeSavo and Dr. Ramachandran, marks a change in the format for the forum. We will be privy to this conversation between an artist and a scientist. Tonight, our artist is Roman DeSavo, an MFA graduate from UCSD, a conceptual artist whose sculpture and installations utilize everyday objects and materials in inventive and in, uh, unexpected ways. Roman's, Roman's work combines his interest in craft, technology, language, materials, <coughs> with an ever-present attributes of wit and play. His work is collected by major museums, and he has shown in numerous venues throughout the United States and Europe, <coughs> including the Whitney Biennial. His most recent show at the Crick Gallery, Split Splice Play Display, was mentioned as one of San Diego's better art shows in 2009 by Robert Pincus. Dr. Ramachandran is the director of UCSD's Center for Brain and Cognition. His major areas of research are cog uh, cognitive neuroscience and behavioral neurology, with emphasis on neuroplasticity phantom limbs, stroke rehabilitation, human visual perception and cognition, and visual psychophysics. Newsweek magazine named him a member of the Century Club, one of the 100 most prominent people to watch in the 21st century. Richard Dawkins has described him as the Marco Polo of neuroscience. He really examines the interface of science and humanities. We'll start this with Roman DeSavo giving a presentation, followed by Dr. Ramachandran. They will have a conversation. I, we will then have some <clears throat> questions. I have a few that were submitted beforehand, and then we'll tackle those questions, and then we'll open it up to questions from the audience. Roman DeSavo. Images um, give you a sense of the range of what I do. Uh, quick collage here. Uh, a laptop computer plate I made called FaceTime. I made an edition of these. Uh, give pe it gives people a, the experience of seeing themselves uh, close up while they have the wheel. <laughs> this is a, a log that I, uh, I installed light bulbs in each one of the, the stumps where the limbs had been. <laughs> This is a, an alabaster joystick. I call it my thriving joystick. <laughs> <laughs> this is my Certain <laughs> fountain. This is a, a small fountain that erupts from a floor drain whenever the user flushes. <laughs> this is uh, a kind of tinker toy structure made of rocks and steel rods. I call it air holder. <laughs> this is uh, firewood. It's made of firewood and uh, carefully selected pieces of plywood. This is uh, this um, this is called cumulus, a sculpture of a cloud, an accumulation of about 500 pounds of rocks and mortar. I arranged, painted, uh, painted white, and placed it on a little uh, spacer over the pedestal so it would seem to levitate. <laughs> more weightless. And this is about 300 pounds of uh, concrete that I cast in a hole in the ground, uh, along with the light bulb, so that when I, I excavated it and suspended it from the ceiling, uh, it could work as a, a light fixture. I call this piece heavy light. <laughs> and this is just a quick uh, collage. Gives, begins to give you a sense of the range of what I do. Um, I like to work with energetic phenomena such as water, wind, fire, electricity. Um, people I also see often as energetic phenomena and I like to include them in my work so that audience participation and the use of my objects is, is something I think about a lot. Um, the methods I employ in constructing my sculptures often have some kind of ingenuity and uh, like um, I like to use the element of surprise in my 
I, I think it helps to light up the minds of my audience. Uh, I've often uh, described myself as a conceptual artist that works with his hands. Um, however, this description doesn't really uh, doesn't take into uh, consideration the fact that I, I care a great deal about what my work looks like. And because over the years I've come to recognize uh, how profoundly I um, privilege one visual appearance over others, uh, the work that Dr. Ramachandran has done that uh, starts to get at the question of, of how and why this is has been very fascinating to me. So I've uh, assembled a few more images of projects that I thought might have some, <laughs> some, some kind of resonance with the way I think about Ramachandran's work. <laughs> interpretation that the connection is there is in it. But uh, this is a, a very rudimentary lamp that I made many years ago. And it was my first foray into uh, working with electricity, really just basically reducing the lamp to its bare essentials. And I found that it had quite an intense, it cr created quite a tension in the lamps. Uh, this is uh, this work with electricity kind of evolved into more elaborate uh, projects. This is a maze made of electrical conduits. And uh, it's called Power Maze Wisconsin. It invites the viewer to trace the path that the electricity takes to get from the switches to the light bulbs. A more recent uh, electrical conduit piece. And here's a, an older piece dealing with Oh, electricity also, but more about the interface of the electrical system and, and our bodies and thinking about architecture in a kind of ergonomic way. Um, thinking of basically making it like a kind of arm out of a wall. The wall, this, this kind of prosthetic device is, is made of the same stuff that the wall is made of. And um, as you reach to turn the lights off it, and it back and it kind of meets you halfway. <laughs> and this, this has gotten me thinking about uh, devices in general that, uh, that, that we live with and use it. There's, there's often a kind of correspondence that they have to our body that interests me from just, just to think about how we respond psychologically to that kind of design for our bodies. And this is a piece I call Tissue Bank, sort of um, thinking about things like ATM machines and the kind of control consoles that um, sort of technology devices have. And uh, this is a thing where you can uh, extract a tissue from this upper orifice, which corresponds to the face, and then deposit the, orf deposit the tissue in this orifice that corresponds to the, uh, the, the midsection. You step on this formica clad pedal and, and it opens it up for you and so you can dispose of it. <laughs> um, joysticks were another one of these devices that, that they're kind of fit to the hand. I found just compelling and wanted to design one myself. I uh, did this project in about 1998 at the Museum of Contemporary Arts uh, La Jolla Garden Space. This is called Garden Gardens. So I made six of these joysticks from scratch and, and installed them like a kind of gardens. Uh, <laughs> uh, they're, they're basically defending the museum. <laughs> and then they invite the viewer up to, to figure, you know, when you see a joystick, you want to know what it does. And, pull the trigger and a little mist of, ex of fragrance is expelled from the air. <laughs> uh, that would be typically wafted back on the participant by the prevailing person. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a uh, floral concoction of essential oils. <laughs> 